That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. So Joe Biden really, I mean, all kinds of mental gymnastics to try to explain how what he said back during the Kavanaugh hearings or in regards to Anita Hill, that it was correct then and what he is saying now is correct and they're the same thing, which they're obviously not. So to understand exactly what is happening, what is going on, for those of you that may not be as familiar with Joe Biden's accusation, what happened is he had a person that was a staffer for him back in the early to mid-1990s. Uh, it would have been 27 years ago by this point. So an almost 30-year-old accusation, this woman named Tara Reed, who claims that at one point he pinned her up against a wall and trying to keep this at least somewhat family-friendly, but if you have little kids, you, you may want to you know, move them out uh, here for a second or, or turn the sound off. He penetrated her with his fingers. So, you know, pretty serious a allegation that, I mean, with absolutely no question, qualifies as sexual assault. Some people would even say because penetration was involved that it technically meets the definition of rape. Again, that, that kind of depends on the legal definition that you're using. But either way, I mean, really, really bad. If that is true, and I, I don't know if it's true or not, but if that turns out to be true, I think that you would be correct in saying that Joe Biden is one of the worst people on the planet. Somebody that would do that and use his power, abuse another person, in particular a woman who is defenseless at this point and getting away with it scot-free and even rising to the level of being the vice president of this country for 27 years, that's about as low as it gets. Like He's one of the worst people on planet Earth if that is the case. However, the evidence is not that conclusive. So what we're looking at here is, is as far as Tara Reid and, and what she's using as support for her claim, and this is one thing that's very difficult with dealing with any allegations of sexual assault or rape, especially ones that are really old, because it's really hard to find evidence on that, and they almost always happen at a time where there's only two people, there's no witnesses, that, that tends to be when things like this take place, and that makes it very, very difficult to corroborate this or to prove it one way or the other. But she does have four people now that have come out and testified to say that, I mean, not testified under oath, but you know what I'm saying, that have basically said that, yes, I remember Tara Reid talking to me about this or an event that vaguely resembles this around the time of that taking place. And there's also a Larry King segment where Larry King had a caller. Remember, this is back when Larry King was on CNN. And it happened in the 90s, not too long after this thing allegedly took place. And they confirmed that it was Tara Reed's mother who was asking about a sexual assault for somebody that, you know, presumably was her daughter. So there is some corroborating evidence. Is that ironclad? No. Does it prove that Joe Biden did this thing? It kind of makes you think that it's at least possible and that there may be something to it, but as far as being able to say that absolutely Joe Biden did this, it certainly wouldn't meet the qualification in a court of law. But that's where we stand right now. And it's important to note that these allegations are significantly more credible than anything against Brett Kavanaugh or Clarence Thomas. Because in their cases, with Christine Blasey Ford and Anita Hill, well, it's already automatically even if we had none of that corroborating evidence, it's automatically more credible than the Kavanaugh hearing because we can actually prove that Tara Reid did in fact know Joe Biden. We couldn't even do that with Ford's case. With Anita Hill, it's roughly the same. Now, Anita Hill did claim that there was a, to, to give you a little bit of backstory on that, she claimed that Justice Thomas once took a pubic hair and put it on a, a can of Coke that she was presumably going to drink and he was trying to, I don't know, trick her into doing that or something, which would have been a bad thing to do. And certainly sexual harassment still wouldn't be sexual assault, still wouldn't be as serious as what Joe Biden is accused of doing. As, as bad as that would be, and that would be horrible 
behavior, if that had actually happened, there was no evidence other than her word that it ever did happen. But that would be horrible if it ever did happen. But even if that were correct, still wouldn't be as bad, nearly as bad as what Joe Biden is accused of doing. So, all that being said, let's go ahead and look at what Joe Biden himself has to say in his defense. This is a clip from Joe Biden, and we'll do a comparison on the Today Show when the, the, when the Kavanaugh hearings were going on, talking about how women should be given the benefit of the doubt. The woman should be given the benefit of the doubt and not be, not be uh, um, you know, uh, abused again by the system. Mm. It takes enormous courage for a woman to come forward and the bright lights of millions of people watching and relive something that happened to her, assert that something happened to her. And she should be treated with respect. So Joe Biden asserts that if a woman is not given the benefit of the doubt, according to that clip, that what that means is that she is being abused again. And Joe Biden now has this accuser, Tara Reid, who has come forward to use his own verbiage there, come out in the bright lights, come out into the public, and, and courageously declared that she was sexually assaulted by Joe Biden. Joe Biden asserts that she's wrong. In other words, not giving her the benefit of the doubt. So does that mean that Joe Biden is now abusing her? Maybe you could make the case, and I'm willing to make this case. Maybe you could make the case that because Joe Biden would have personal knowledge of this, because, of course, if he had done this, he would have been here, because it didn't happen that you could make an exception for Joe Biden. Well, if that is the case, then that wouldn't excuse all of the people that are continuing to support Joe Biden. According to Joe Biden's definition there, that if those people are not giving this woman the benefit of the doubt, then they are abusing her according to his own standard that he presented in his own words by not giving her the benefit of the doubt and just believing her when it comes to these accusations against him. And another thing, too, I don't remember in any of Joe Biden's official statements or interviews that he's done, I, I don't remember at any point him talking about how brave Tara Reid is and how courageous this is, which, granted, if he knows that he never sexually assaulted this woman, I wouldn't either. But the point is, there's a very different tone being put out now as opposed to everybody lauding praise for people like Christine Blasey Ford and Anita Hill when they came out. Just to make clear that the mere act of coming forward is something that Joe Biden said ought to be admired, let's look at this quote from Joe Biden in an interview with the Washington Post. You can see there it says, Speaking generally, Biden added, For a woman to come forward in the glaring light of focus nationally, you've got to start off with the presumption that at least the essence of what she is talking about is real. Whether or not she forgets facts, whether or not she's been, it's been made worse or better over time, but nobody fails to understand this like jumping into the cauldron. So, a couple really important things in this quote. First of all, Joe Biden is asserting that if a woman is willing to come into the spotlight, it must mean that there's at least something to her allegations. So does that mean that when Tara Reid comes into the spotlight to accuse him that, well, maybe what she said happened didn't happen in the sense that he didn't penetrate her, but he did sexually assault her? Does that mean that that would be believing the essence of what she's saying is true? That maybe he didn't, she didn't do, ex or sorry, he did not do exactly what she said, but something similar to that did happen, something of a sexual nature where he pinned her up against the wall and did something to her happened. And another thing that I find hilarious is that at that point, when he wasn't the one in the hot seat, he said, you know, whether or not she believes facts or whether or not those facts have changed over time, that shouldn't be a factor in whether or not we believe that the essence of what they're saying is real if they're willing to come forward like this. Uh, well, shouldn't it? Like, whether or not the person's story changes four or five times, that should be a big deal. The reason that he said that is because at the time, Christine Ford and some of the other people that had accused Kavanaugh, their stories had been changing. They could not keep a consistent story because their stories were made up. When it comes to Joe Biden, it seems as though that because 
Tara Reed's details have shifted a little bit and she's had an issue keeping a consistent story, which by the way, as I've said many times on the program before, I don't necessarily believe Tara Reed. I think that the evidence that she has is not really all that compelling. And she has messed up some details here and there. So maybe it's true, maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't think that the evidence is there to con that would be able to convict Joe Biden. And I do still believe in the standard of innocence until proven guilty. That's not the point of what I'm saying. What I am saying is all of the things that Joe Biden said back then would mean that we would have to believe his accuser now that she should be given the benefit of the doubt that the essence of what she's talking about is real whether or not she remembers the facts or not. I find that to be a very important thing because usually if somebody can't remember the facts or they're constantly getting their facts mixed up, that's usually the sign of a made-up story. Any forensic investigator or somebody that, that works with victims will tell you the reason that in our criminal justice system you have to get the story over and over again, get that story from different people, and see if the details line up is because if they don't, it's a good sign that somebody is lying. And that may be what Tara Reid is doing. I don't know. But the point is, he wanted to just disregard that as a piece of evidence that she may be making it up when it was Brett Kavanaugh's accuser. He's perfectly fine with saying, yeah, that's evidence that she doesn't know what she's talking about and she's just making this up uh, when it, she's accusing me. Now, here's Joe Biden's denial on MSNBC that we saw over the weekend. I have not reached out to her. It's 27 years ago. There, this never happened. And uh, when she first made the claim, we made it clear that it never happened. And uh, that's as simple as that. There, the best of my knowledge, there's been no complaints made up against me in terms of my Senate career, in terms of my office, and anything that's been run. Look, this is an open book. There's nothing for me to hide. Nothing at all. Look, from the very beginning, I've said believing women means taking the woman's claim seriously when she steps forward and, and then vet it, look into it. This, this, that, that's true in this case as well. Women have a right to be heard and the, and the press should rigorously investigate claims they make. I always uphold that principle. But in the end, in every case, the truth is what matters. And in this case, the truth is the claims are false. <sighs> Where was all this nuance during the Kavanaugh hearings? Because the thing is, the standard that Joe Biden just presented, you could put that monologue, take Joe Biden's voice out of it, just have it transcribed down there, and it would line up almost exactly with what I was saying during the Kavanaugh hearings. That women should be taken seriously. When they make an accusation like that, this, we should hear them out, and there should be an investigation but that ultimately we should make a decision based on where that evidence leads and they should not be given some kind of default benefit of the doubt just because they make an accusation. Take them seriously, but this hashtag believe all women stuff is nonsense. I remember Joe Biden speaking about this during the Kavanaugh hearing. All of this nuance was not there. There was not a call by Joe Biden to vet the person. There was no call by Joe Biden to investigate and just follow wherever the evidence leads. Like I said, I agree with practically everything Joe Biden just said. I just wish that he had said the exact same thing when all this was happening to Brett Kavanaugh. It's almost like his standard changed a little bit when all of a sudden the accuser was accusing him. He tries to do this dance where he's explaining that the standards he had then and the standards that he had now are the same even though, as you can plainly see, nothing could be further from the truth. But why is it different now? Do you regret what you said during the Kavanaugh hearings? What I said during the Kavanaugh hearings was that she had a right to be heard. And the fact that she came forward, the presumption would be she's telling the truth unless it's proved she wasn't telling the truth. Ooh, Joe Biden just shot himself in the foot. Because what he just did was say that the standard that I had was that, that she should be heard. Okay, I'm with him on that. And then he says, but she should be, whatever she's saying should be presumed to be true unless you can prove it to be false. Um, no, that's guilty until proven innocent, and that's the exact opposite of the standard you just said on TV that you want applied to you. You said that when it comes to your accuser, 
Well, it's not true. And because it's not true, then because she has not presented evidence that shows that it is true, then I should be let off the hook. But you said when it came to Christine Blasey Ford that she should be heard and she should be presumed to be true. What she's saying should be presumed to be true unless it is proven to be false. No, that's guilty until proven innocent. That's the opposite of the American criminal justice system. That's the opposite of the way that the court of public opinion should operate. Obviously, it doesn't. But the way that it should operate and the standard that I've held and most conservatives have held is that you should presume that a person is innocent until you can prove they did something wrong. So Joe Biden can't even keep track of what Joe Biden was saying in his own standards within the same 20-minute interview. He can't even keep himself straight then, much less by a span of two years between how he handled the thing with Kavanaugh and how he's handling it now. Mika Brzezinski continues to press him on this. He tries to explain why that was a completely different scenario. As it pertained to Dr. Ford, everyone wanted, uh, high-level Democrats said she should be believed, that they believed it happened. You said if someone like Dr. Ford were to come out, the essence of what she is saying has to be believed, has to be real. No. Why? I know what I said. Why, say, it has Why to be is it real for Dr. Ford, but not for Tara Reid? There, because the facts are that, look, she, I'm not suggesting she had no right to come forward. And I never, and I'm not saying any woman, they should come forward. They should be heard. And then it should be investigated. It should be investigated. And if there's anything that makes it, that is consistent with what's being said, and she makes the case or the case is made, then it should be believed. But ultimately, the truth matters. The truth matters. It's period. Well, first of all, killer conclusion there to that point, it's period. Maybe it is period. I don't know, but I'm not really sure what that means, Joe Biden. But the evidence that we have against Joe Biden is already significantly more than we ever had against Clarence Thomas or against Brett Kavanaugh. And so his standard doesn't make any sense. If he did believe the women then and didn't believe the women now, even though there was more evidence now than there is then, then it's obvious that what Joe Biden was doing was politically posturing and trying to do something that benefited his party, not uphold some kind of standard. That's the issue that's going on here. And by the way, if you don't believe me, here's another clip from back in 2008 with PBS NewsHour where Joe Biden was talking about the standard and his, the part that he played as a senator when it came to Anita Hill. Women should be believed. I believed Anita Hill. I said I believed Anita Hill. I voted against Clarence Thomas when she decided she was willing to come forward. What I feel badly about is the inability to be able to silence the Republican critics on the committee. What people wanted me to do was to gavel down other senators who were harassing her, who were harassing her. And I wish I had had the power or a way to communicate. But you may remember, I got in shouting matches with witnesses who were attacking her. Um, I got criticized for shouting at witnesses who were making these statements. Well, first of all, PBS NewsHour has to get some quieter chairs because that was incredibly distracting through that whole interview. The, you can hear the chair moving back and forth with Joe Biden. But anyway... If I'm understanding what Joe Biden just said correctly, then what he just called for is a mere allegation being enough to disqualify somebody from getting your vote. Because he said, I believed Anita Hill. And again, the only evidence that we had was Anita Hill's word that it happened. We didn't have four witnesses that claimed that it happened like we do with Tara Reid. We didn't have a contemporaneous news segment where the victim's mother was calling into Larry King and asking about sexual assault and saying that her daughter had been sexually assaulted by her boss. We don't have that. Not with Anita Hill. Yet you did believe Anita Hill so much so that you said it disqualified him and it's the reason that I voted against him. Look, if you don't like Justice Thomas... If you don't like that he's a conservative on the bench and he's pro-life and all of those things, okay, I disagree with you, but at least you're being honest about it. You're saying it was the, the reason that you voted for, or sorry, voted against Clarence Thomas 
is because of Anita Hill. But when it comes to an allegation that's actually more credible against you, you don't think that that should disqualify people from voting for you. I mean, there's about six different ways that this thing is a double standard now. Joe Biden has convicted Joe Biden according to Joe Biden's own standard. I think that standard is wrong. I think that that ought not be the standard. But Joe Biden did believe it then, as long as it's not applied to him. He's saying that he wishes that he could have shut down any Republicans that were even alleging that maybe these things were untrue. Does that mean that Joe Biden shouldn't be able to speak out against the accusations made against Joe Biden? Would you want to silence the critics that are saying, hey, maybe what Tara Reid is saying isn't right? I mean, the, the level of gymnastics that Joe Biden's mind is able to do would be pretty impressive if it were, you know, still there. But obviously looking at all of this and, and looking at the evidence, looking at what Joe Biden said then and how his standard has completely changed now, it's obvious that these decisions were made for political expediency, not out of some altruistic concern for women or some pursuit of justice. Ultimately, he was for the uh, uh, he was for ruining Brett Kavanaugh's life because he doesn't like Brett Kavanaugh. He was for ruining Clarence Thomas's life and career because he doesn't like Clarence Thomas. When it's an accuser coming against him, oh, you should still vote for me. You shouldn't just believe somebody just because they accuse someone. That's crazy talk. Well, it wasn't then, Joe Biden. Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow sun of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel, you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances.